Good morning. Um, I have a couple readings for us for today. The first comes from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go on to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain to pray by himself. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by waves, was far from land, and the wind was against them, and early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. When the, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus answered them, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. And when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got in the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And then our other reading is from the 21st chapter of John. Uh, and this comes after, um, after Jesus' death and resurrection, when he starts to appear to his disciples. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of, of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to, to all of them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got in the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you have, do you have no fish? And they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast your net to the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. This disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, Look, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard this, uh, that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. And when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it, and bread. Sometime in my teenage years, my family went on a camping trip in a great spot along the shore of the North Fork of the Flathead River, where it cuts along the western edge of the great granite peaks that make up Glacier National Park. We camped on a rocky shoreline across from a wall of granite that rose impressively out of the water toward the sky, and we were surrounded by nothing but the breeze and the moving water as the backdrop of sound to our brief excursion into the wilderness. We watched one afternoon as a family of otters played in the rapids. We swam in a deep and slow-moving part of the river. We tried out a little bit of fishing. We also had a little two-seater kayak that we were anxious to test out in the moving currents. Normally, when you kayak in moving water, you have what's called a spray skirt, which is a membrane that seals up the hole that you're sitting in and keeps water out of your boat. Well, we didn't have spray skirts, so we would start down the rapids, and with each bump and wave would take on water until we were so loaded down that we were sitting on the bottom of the river instead of floating on the top. Um, and being late in the summer, it really wasn't that deep, a, a couple of feet. And so we were able to stand up and pull the boat out and turn it upside down on the shore to drain the water and carry it back to the top of the rapid run and try again. We were having fun. The disciples in this story are not having fun. The waves are rising. They are battered. They're tired. They're scared. And in the middle of this fear, in the moment when they worry that all is lost, Jesus shows up. Now, I do wonder a little bit about the disciples here. The wind is against them. The waves are against them. Jesus has told them to go to the other shore, so they rowed and rowed in vain, almost to their peril, just to do what they believed Jesus wanted them to do. 
why not just turn back and go to Jesus? Instead, they keep trying to go against the wind until finally Jesus comes out to them. Now, in that moment, Peter, one of the disciples, decides to be bold. He calls on Jesus to invite him out into the water. Peter steps out of the boat. But as soon as he looks at the, around at the storm, he begins to sink. Now, Peter's name literally means rock, so perhaps it's just living up to his name when he begins to sink beneath the waves. When Peter sinks, Jesus reaches out to save him and pulls him into the boat and calms the storm. Now, there's a number of lessons here. First, the disciples are trying to do what they believe they're supposed to do. They heard Jesus tell them to go to the other, the other side, and there's going to be no stopping them. Even when they're in distress, they can only think about the task. But in the moment when things are their worst, why do they not turn back to Jesus? Sometimes we set out in our life in a direction that we feel God has sent us, and things might end up crashing down all around us. In those moments, do we dig in and become stubborn, or do we turn back to Jesus to ground ourselves before moving forward again? Now, each situation we find ourselves in will be different, and there will be times for uh, where keep moving ahead is appropriate, but I have to think that turning back and grounding yourself in Jesus is never a bad option, no matter where we are, even, even if we're, we're no, we know we're doing the thing that Jesus wanted us to do. Now, another reminder that comes in this story is that Jesus comes to us in those moments when everything seems lost. There's nothing that can stand in the way of that. No matter how bad things seem, remember that Jesus comes to us even in those moments. And even when we're sinking, it'll be Jesus who holds us up. Now, Peter, one of the, one of the disciples again, uh, eventually figures this out. Or should I say, Peter eventually trusts this. Later, there is our other story, which comes after the death of Jesus, after Jesus has risen. And it's, it's tough. Peter doesn't know what to do with himself. It's been a rough week. This is the week that his best friend, the one he truly worships, has died. So not knowing what to do with himself after the storm of all of this, Peter goes back to doing what he was doing before he met Jesus. Perhaps fishing is one of those things that helped him clear his mind. Perhaps it was, perhaps he was just hiding in his work in the middle of that storm. Jesus shows up. And Peter, who almost drowned the last time he got out of his boat to be with Jesus, dives headfirst into the water and swims to shore. I look at the storm and the water and the boats and the people here. And I think about, in, in these two stories, and I think about how we're all trying to find our way in this world. Trying to find where it is that Jesus is calling us. We're all trying to find our way. Adversity is going to happen in life. You will fall. You will break bones. You'll get sidelined for a while. You will see grief and pain and hardship. Things won't go your way. <laughs> oh yeah, I realize I'm just full of good news this morning, aren't I? But even in hardship, even in pain, even in struggles or despair, you're not alone. You are loved, called, claimed, and held up. Even when we fail to turn to Jesus and to ground ourselves in him, he comes to us. And if you stumble and start to sink, Jesus will pull you up. When you've lost your way, no matter how far you've gotten away from the shore, there's no distance too great for Jesus to find you. So when all else seems lost, look up. Because even in the midst of stormy seas, Jesus comes to us. And that is the good news I have for you today. <laughs>